this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop and today I'm going to show you a couple of alternative ways to add a sky overlay and also um, a few tips to overcome some problems that you may be having when you're applying sky overlays to your image. So today I have two different photos that we're going to be working on. This is the first one. Um, as you can see it's got straight, you know, pretty straight horizon and just two subjects and there's no real trees or um, any troublesome spots that you might run into. So I'm going to show you how to apply a sky overlay on a photo that's easier like this and then also on one that has a couple trees and some other um, things in the photo that might catch you up when you're applying a sky overlay. Um, so in, if you've ever seen my other sky overlay tutorial you'll notice that um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently in this one. Um, the first thing that I always do is I open the sky that I want to use um, and I open it just like I would open a regular photo. Go to File, Open, find the one you want and pop it up right in here. Um, the reason I do this is so that I have it open in my tabs so that I can use this sky on several different images if I need to. Um, if you are someone who has trouble using the Move tool to drag and drop the sky onto your photo, um, I get a lot of emails from people who have trouble with that step. For some reason it's not working on their um, computer or something like that. So I'm going to undo that by hitting alt Control z And then what I'm going to do is um, instead of having it open like this, you can apply it directly to your photo just by going to File and then go to Place. And then you can find the, you can navigate to the folder where you keep your skies um, and then choose the sky that you want in here. Um, and then when you hit place, which one did I use? Hang on a second, sorry. Um, I think I used tw yeah, 20, and then hit place. And what this will do is it will pop it up right in your photo for you. And it will even pull up these bounding boxes so that you can stretch it and size it to your photo perfectly. And you can you know stretch as needed or pull it down below the horizon line so you have some blending room. Um, but yeah, this applies it directly to your photo so you don't have to worry about using the move tool or dragging and dropping or having it not show up for you or any of the other problems uh, that you might have when using the move tool. So once you uh, place it on your photo and you want to get rid of that bounding box, you just hit the check mark up here and it will stay where you want it. Um, now with this photo, as you'll see, as you can probably see, the shadows for my subject are showing that the sun is coming from this corner, the bottom right hand corner of the photo. And in the sky overlay, the sun is coming from the bottom left hand corner. So what I want to do here is just flip it to the opposite side. So I'm going to go to edit, transform, and go to flip horizontal. And I'll just put it over on the other side so that it looks more realistic. Uh, when you're applying your sky overlays, the more you pay attention to details like shadows and where the light in your image is already coming from, the more believable it will be when you add a sky to your photo. So in this one, um, in my previous tutorial, I used the magic wand tool to select the area of the photo and all of that stuff so you could um, have that selection to go off of. In this one, I am just going to place my sky in a different blend mode. I'm going to use multiply and as you can see it put that sky in there. Um, you'll see here along where the sky ended you can see that harsh line um, and you'll notice that some of the sky detail might be over my subjects. If you turn that on and off uh, the subjects have gotten darker and are tinted the color of the sky. Um, but putting your sky in multiply blend mode allows the sky and the tones of your overlay to play with the, the tones that are already in your photo which makes it very believable and very easy to manipulate um, to make it look more uh, believable. So today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a layer mask to this layer here and we're just going to tweak uh, what's already been done because I think this looks pretty good as is. So uh, to add a layer mask all we're going to do is just hit this little button right here, the rectangle with the circle inside, and that will put a white box right here on your photo, uh, on your layer, I'm sorry. That white box is just the window for that layer. If this layer is your sky and this box right here is white, it means that your sky is showing on your photo. That window is open. If you need to close that window or hide that sky, you will use the color black. And you can either fill this mask with black entirely, which means you're hiding the sky from your photo, or you can just hide it in certain spots, which is what we're going to do right now. Um, I have selected a black paintbrush, and if my mask is white, I want to use the opposite color uh, brush. So I'm going to use black to hide my sky. Now what I want to do here is make sure that my brush hardness is set to 0%. Um, in some cases you may want to raise that hardness and all that means is that um, the edge of your brush won't be as soft. Uh, it'll be a, a little more um, visible and defined of a line. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is make sure it's at 0% hardness, so it's very soft, and we are at 10% opacity. You can raise that up to 40% or whatever works best for you. I just did that by hitting the 4 on my keyboard. Now all I'm going to do is just sweep that harsh line from the sky off of my grass here so that it's not so believable. I don't want any harsh lines like that. And that's, um, that's also why I pulled that sky below my horizon. So because if I had to paint right here, um, it's harder to make that more believable. So I just pulled it down into the grass a little bit so that I could just paint that off that way. And now the same thing goes for over your subjects. If you need to zoom in here and you want to paint some off of them, just make sure your brush is set to black because we're removing. And then you can paint this off of them if you need to. Um, again, you can do this as much or as little as you want to, as long as there are no like um, really defined details from the clouds over them. If it's just like tint and coloring like this, um, it's up to your discretion how much you want to remove from them. Um, if there are harsh you know, cloud details, like this was over them, you definitely want to paint that off. Um, you don't want it to be completely obvious that you've added an overlay. So I just lightly mask off like this and just kind of pull their details back out a little bit. Um, I kind of like the color over them, how, how rich and, and dark that um, sunset color is over them. But So especially on his face, he looks a little cool now that I'm removing it. So I'm just going to flip my color back to white to put that back where I took it off a little bit. I kind of like that. Put it back over his hand a little bit too. So and then you can turn this on and off and you can see how it plays with their clothes and their skin and the colors and if you notice details are there that you need to remove you're welcome to do that I'm gonna kind of leave it because I don't think it looks um, too bad I actually really like what it does to them um, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is an extra tip you can do when using these sky overlays um, and that is that you can double them up you can duplicate this I'm just gonna drag this sky overlay down here on top of this little sheet of paper and that's gonna double the sky now as you can see this is really strong and defined and not really what I'm wanting um, so I'm going to remove this layer mask. I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to add a new one. And I'm doing that so that I can make sure we're at a completely blank slate. I don't want um, the mask I used on this layer to kind of interfere with the new one. So what I'm going to do here is now I'm really going to close the window over the whole image. Like I told you earlier about this, the layer masks, it's like an open or a closed window. If it's white, it's an open window. You can see that entire sky. If you're closing that window, I'm just going to do that by hitting Control or Command I on my keyboard. And now that window is closed. That second sky layer is hidden from your photo. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to boost the sky in areas that I want to increase the drama. So I'm going to make my brush bigger, and I'm doing that by hitting the right bracket key on my photo, or on my keyboard, I'm sorry. And I am make sure that my brush is set to white because my layer mask is black. You want to have the opposite uh, color. And then my opacity is at 30%. I'm going to leave it there. I think that's pretty good. And now I'm just going to kind of paint over anywhere that I want to increase that color. And as you will notice, we're still in multiply blend mode. And multiply kind of darkens and deepens all of the tones. So you can change this if you want. You can put it in overlay blend mode to pop those colors out. And you can see the difference now. And I always, usually, I always do the second um, sky layer in overlay blend mode, just because if I'm duplicating it, I really want that extra boosted contrast, and that's usually why I'm doubling up. So I always um, put the second one in overlay, just so I can get all that contrast that I want. Now here, you can experiment with going over your subjects with this, um, but you'll notice it does kind of create that orangey um, color on them. Now, if this is something that you don't mind because it's believable with the color of the sky, you're welcome to leave that. Or you can come in and just paint that off with a black brush again because black is going to hide that from your photo. And so you can take that off of them. Or you can, if you like them bright, you can use a regular brightening layer so that it doesn't add any extra color. Um, and so there we've got our changes, just quick adjustments here, but I'm going to show you the before um, just by holding the Alt key down on my background layer and hitting that eyeball. And now you can see we've completely added those skies there, um, and it looks believable, because, especially with the color of them and the shadows here. Um, but if you want it, you can fade the sky as it gets closer to the horizon. I'm going to do that on this layer because this is the one that has most of all that sky detail, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick way to um, 
help you easily fade the sky into any tricky um, areas like trees or grass or something like that that's it's kind of plaguing you and you're trying to get it perfect and it's not really working you can grab a black brush at about 20 percent opacity i did that just by hitting the two on my keyboard and then i'm going to sweep this make my brush really big and just sweep it over the bottom of my photo and this is lightening it um, and it usually helps when you do this without that second layer on um, and you're just kind of doing it this way. You can fade it as it gets to the horizon because that's you, if you go outside, you'll notice that's how the sky actually is. It's darker up at the top and then it gets brighter and lighter um, down towards the ground. So that's the same if you're adding a sky overlay. By lightening this in those, in those areas, you're not only reducing the appearance of that sky there, which makes it easier to blend, um, but you're also adding additional believability to your photo by doing that. Um, now, if you don't like how light it is, um, you are welcome to paint a little bit of that back in. You just um, hit the white, make sure your brush is white, and then you can just paint that back in a little and darken it up if you need to. And there you go. So I'm kind of um, leaving it bright over here where the, the sunspot is and then kind of darkening as you go away from the, the sun. And again, this is completely up to you. You don't have to lighten as you go toward the horizon, but if it helps you blend and it also um, increases the believability of the sky overlay effect, then it's kind of a win-win. So again, you can just hit Alt and grab that eyeball on the back layer and turn it on and off and kind of see what you've done. I do notice a lot of color and, and detail on him, so you can additionally play with this and just paint it off um, with a black brush. But again, that's up to you. And it also um, is usually only super believe I mean super noticeable when you flip back and forth so as long as you zoom in and kind of see that there's no you know detail that makes it look fake over them then I think you're good to go so there's that and now the next one I'm going to show you is on this photo here and it's got some trees and we're going to use the same sky overlay this time we're going to drag and drop I'm going to use my move tool click right on the sky overlay and drag it over the photo. And I'm not going to let go until I see my mouse change and add that little plus sign. Now I'm just going to let it go and drag it up here, edit free transform to stretch and resize it. And again, I'm going to pull it a little bit below my horizon so I have some blending room and I'm going to hit the check mark. And again, same thing in this photo. Um, I want the light to be appearing from the bottom right hand corner and there's really no real reason behind that. Just my personal preference, you're welcome to do it either way. Um, in these trees, you can kind of see some light hitting them. And so I think it would be more believable if the light was over here and able to hit them. So, um, but again, on your photo, you can eyeball it and see what looks best for you. So I'm gonna turn this back on and make sure that it's selected. And I'm gonna go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Same thing we did last time, just putting the light over there. Um, and again, I'm just gonna put it in multiply blend mode. And now you'll see that with this one, um, it's a lot more difficult because there is this giant structure here that takes on the, the texture of those clouds. So you'll notice that you really it is really obvious that there's um, some cloud detail there. So we're going to add another layer mask, just the rectangle with the circle inside. And you can paint this off here um, like we did in the other photo. Or you could um, delete the layer mask here, turn that back on. Um, you can use the... Uh, magic wand tool that I showed you in the first video tutorial. <coughs> Excuse me. Just grab that tool, click on the background. Oops, sorry. You got to make sure your background layer is selected first. So just click on that and then reselect. And then you might have to hold down your shift key to select more of the tones um, and any additional areas. So I'm going to select inside the structure and also inside their legs. Um, and again, you'd want to get inside these trees here. And this is where it can kind of get tricky, um, especially working with trees and things like this. So that's why I don't generally use the move tool. I mean, I'm sorry, the magic wand tool when I've got these trees here. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is the same technique as last time. I would put it in multiply blend mode. And this time I'm just going to add that layer mask, grab a black brush, and paint it off again. And we're going to do this at 80% opacity, just kind of paint it off there. And so now what you can do is um, the same thing I just showed you that we did in the last tutorial. Just grab that move tool, select your background layer, and you can hit these um, little structures or whatever. Obviously, they won't be in your photo. But anything that you need to remove the sky from, if it's something like this, you can just grab these and then click until it selects all of it. 
I'm just holding down my shift key to keep making more adjustments. And, and then you can grab your layer mask and paint with black right inside there. And this, isn't, this might not always be perfect. Um, sometimes when you hit Control D and remove those um, selections, you'll notice some irregularities in here, um, some areas that you accidentally missed or something like that. So you can come in here with your mask and tweak and paint it off. Now if you um, go over the sky like I did here, just grab your white brush and paint it back in. Now to make sure that it's still believable, sometimes I like to just go over it with 10% opacity brush, a uh, white brush, and paint it back over that, any area you removed it from. Okay, so then you can go like that and just kind of see the changes and adjustments you made. You can zoom in and paint it off of your subjects. You can turn it on and off and kind of see how it plays with them. I actually kind of like that color over them, but we can mask it off a little bit just to make sure that it's not overwhelming. Do that by hitting the three on my keyboard to make it 30% opacity and just painting off of them a little bit. And then paint off her legs. Okay. Now the same thing with the other photo, um, the way I duplicated the sky again. So we're just going to do that one more time. And then this time I'm going to delete the layer mask again because I don't want the adjustments from the last one to apply to this one. And I'm going to put it in overlay blend mode. And then add a layer mask and invert it. Control or Command I on your keyboard. And now I'm going to paint this in where I want it. Especially over these trees here. And the multiply blend mode really um, allows the sky to kind of get in between those leaves. And you can see um, that it blends the blue color from the sky in with those leaves so you don't have to get in there with a brush and mask that in. It's already done for you um, on the previous layer. Not that this one didn't have blue already, um, but it just kind of adds that, that texture from the sky in there really believably so you don't have to do it with your brush. You don't have to do it manually. Uh, that's one thing Multiply Blend Mode is really great for is just kind of putting it in your photo believably. And so then you could apply your edits after this and you can hold on the Alt key and see the before and after here. Um, it's a lot um, easier with the multiply blend mode because you don't have to um, get in super close with the trees and blend it in. It kind of just helps you out um, and makes your steps a lot easier. So that is that. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.